You know, if you ever go to a pet store and you decide you want to get some goldfish or you decide to want to get a few different pets, there's often a limit on how many fish or how many pets they say you could put in a certain container. And so maybe you've thought about this. I wonder how many goldfish I can put in this aquarium. Or maybe you're looking at a lake or a pond and you've thought, I wonder how many fish could possibly be sustained in that pond? One, two, three, 20? Well, this video, we're going to attempt to talk to you about how we could measure population growth and define the limits or the carrying capacity of certain environments. Let's get started. So in this first slide, we want to remind you of something we've actually already covered in a previous video, and that's some basics about population growth. You may remember that I told you there's generally two models that we use to talk about population growth patterns. The first is exponential, and we see that in examples of bacteria, for example. When they're exposed to a new petri dish, they exponentially grow. One becomes two, becomes four, becomes 16, it's exponential growth. This also we see in new environments. So if a invasive species or a non-native species is introduced to a new environment without limiting factors, we're gonna get this blue line here, some sort of exponential growth. Now, what we also mentioned is that that's pretty rare. Most ecosystems, most environments undergo a logistical growth pattern as you see here in the dark red and that means that a population for example the fur seals there's really only a certain capacity that the environment or ecosystem can sustain so logistically we'll reach a capacity that the environment can carry we call that logistical growth so in this video I'm going to talk to you about how we calculate exponential growth and how we calculate logistical growth given the varying circumstances. So we're gonna start with more of an exponential or a general growth formula. So if you think about it, a change in a population, the change, is really just the births, that adds to the population, minus the deaths, that takes away from a population. So we need to always keep this in mind when we are using these formulas. All right, here's a very general formula. This formula is for calculating population change. So if we've got a population that we, that we suspect is changing, we might want to calculate that. How do we do it? How do we calculate the rate of growth? So in this formula, dn over dt equals r max times n. Well, what do those mean? So n is the number of individuals in a population, the number. t is time, d is the rate of change. So now let's look at this. So d, the rate of change or the change in the number over the change in time is equal to r max, which is the maximum per capita growth rate times the number of individuals. All right, so what do all these things mean? All right, so if we wanted to calculate, for example, maybe we've got some little fish in a certain population, in a pond, and we want to calculate the change over time. So dn over dt, the change in number of fish over, let's say, a year is our time, equals r max, the maximum per capita growth rate, this is a little tricky. You have to understand what per capita means. Per capita growth means per individual, right? Not the maximum growth for the whole population, right? 100 fish. But we're talking about per individual fish, per capita. What is the growth rate? And for this little fish that swam in here, their population maximum growth rate, their R max, happens to be 0.75 fish a year. Now you may say, Herder, how, how is a fish gonna give birth to 0.75 fish a year? 
No, that's not how it is. Just like there's not 2.2 average children per family, right? You can't have half a half child, half fish, but that means some fish will have offspring, some fish won't, and some will be eaten immediately, some will survive. So the growth rate per individual per capita for this particular fish is 0.75. So let's say we had 100 fish in a population. We know the per fish growth rate is 0.75. To figure out how many new fish we're going to get, we can just multiply 0.75 times 100. And what we'll get is 75 new fish per year. Okay? So there's an easy way to use that formula. What about the other situation? Well, you've got to think about this question. Can populations really grow exponentially forever, right? Even bacteria in a Petri dish, it's going to limit the size of the Petri dish, how much outer is in the plate. So while we like to think about these exponential growth situations, generally most things are going to hit a logistical growth pattern. So can populations continue to grow exponentially? Of course not, because this growth exponential assumes no natural controls in place. But we know in nature there are limiting factors. So we rarely ever get this exponential growth for too long. What we instead get is a logistical growth pattern because there are natural controls in our environment that limit the population. So as time moves on, there's only a certain population that can be reached. So we get, over time, this logistical growth model. And we have a special name for this line that really can't be passed, or maybe it goes over but then kind of settles back down a little bit. We call that the carrying capacity, and it's abbreviated with a letter K. So carrying capacity, letter K, is the maximum sort of sustainable population in an environment. So as you look here on this chart, you'll see we had some slow growth here, sped up pretty fast, and then things kind of started to slow down a little bit because we got to this sort of equilibrium point, this carrying capacity that could be sustained in our particular ecosystem. So the carrying capacity is just that max population size that the environment can support without really degrading that habitat. If it completely degrades the habitat, then really nothing can survive there. So what is the carrying capacity, that maximum population size? Well then, how do we calculate? And what regulates that population size? Well, you've got to think about all of these things. Competition, right? that is going to regulate a population size. Resources like territory. There's only so much territory that organisms can have in a certain environment. And here you see two cats, right? Oh, they, they're not happy with each other. They're, they're saying, this is my territory, right? Cats are very territorial. So that sets up a limit to population size because cats have to have their territory, and different animals would do as well. Health, that's another important thing in regulating population size. If the population is not healthy, that's going to affect or impact the population size. What's the predator situation like, right? Is there a lot of predation? That's going to impact this population size. Then there are several what we call density dependent population impactors, or these are things that depend on the density of the population, right? And you know, if you think of density back from chemistry, it's really like mass per volume. Density in terms of populations is really the number of individuals per size or per area. So what are the density dependent factors? Well, the food, right? The more dense a population, the more competition is gonna be for that food supply. Also predators, right? The density of a population might attract different predators. So in this case, we can see we have a, a, a pretty good density of some bison there. And you can see wolves, which are social predators in their pack, that are going to hunt and try to take down some of these bison to eat. So the density does matter. 
And then of course, disease is dependent on the density as well. We can see that in any pandemic that you see going on. Um, the density of the population actually does affect. You can see these really big cities when a pandemic hits, they are more likely to spread because of the density. Whereas in very rural communities, you might see less spread, people aren't interacting as much. So these things depend on, depend on the density and they help regulate population size. So how are we gonna calculate all these things? Well, I know in biology, we don't tend to always do a lot of math calculations, but there actually are some equations which will help us calculate growth of population. So I just wanna briefly run through those and then we'll do a few practice problems. So the first one here is the rate. The amount of change, the number, and that's generally the population size, is divided by the change in time. So a rate is just the change in number over the change in time. So 34 swans per year. That was the rate of change, right? That could be positive or negative. The pond lost 34 swans per year or it gained. That's a rate. Population growth then, right, the change in the number over the change in time, is really just equal to what we mentioned earlier, the birth rate minus the death rate. So if the death rate is higher than the birth rate, we're gonna have negative population growth. But if the birth rate is higher than the death rate, we'll have positive population growth. Then these two formulas are specific for the circumstance. If we're talking about exponential growth, think bacteria, we're doing the change in the number of bacteria over time is equal to the maximum per capita per bacteria, for example, times the number we started with, okay? So for exponential growth, we have to take into account the per capita maximum growth rate. And then logistic growth, takes into account this carrying capacity. Remember, because logistic is based on the carrying capacity. So we'll need to use this formula here and include the carrying capacities, the amount that it can sustain when we're calculating the logistical growth problem. All right, so let's do a practice question. So, Practice question. There's a population of about 100 herd fish in a pond at Herder's Cabin, all right? So I'm up there and I decided to do some science and I found out, I did some calculations, right? I must have been bored and I had my calculator. I found out that the birth rate is 0.78 fish per year. The death rate is 0.54 fish a year. And I wonder how many fish will I have after one year in my pond. So to do this, we're gonna have to use some equations. There they are. So if you would like to solve this equation on your own, I would say go ahead and pause the video, try to solve it, and then I'm gonna work through it. So pause if you'd like. Okay, how do we do with this? Let's start with what we're giving. We're given the birth rate and the death rate. Well, if I look at my equations, I've got a formula right here that includes both of those things. So let's calculate. dn dt, the change in number over time, is really the birth rate minus the death rate. So now we know those things. dn dt is equal to 0.78 fish per year minus 0.54 fish per year. So the change in number over time is really a per capita of 0.78 minus 0.54. And just use your handy dandy calculator, Let's plug this in. So if we take 0.78 minus 0.54, what do we get? Is that 0.24? Looks like it, that makes sense to me. 0.24 fish per year. Now, the question said though, after one year, how many fish should be in herder's cabin pond? Well, if the average growth rate is 0.24 fish per year, right? If that's the per capita, and there are 100 fish, and for every fish, it grows 0.24, all we gotta do is multiply them, right? So, to find the number, we're just taking 0.24 fish per year times 100, 
to get 24, right? Because this is 100 fish. So we're going to get a change over the course of the year of 24 fish added to. Well, if I started with 100 and I add 24, how many fish will be in the pond at the end of the year? 124 fish. Okay, so that's a pretty basic question. 124 fish at the end of the next year or for the next year. Okay, that was a pretty basic question. Let's do a new one or one more question that actually includes a logistical growth pattern. So back at Herder's Mountain Cabin, there's a pond and that pond has got some frogs lots of frogs. So Herder was out there and counted 17 mountain frogs at the cabin. All right, in this pond, 17. Now Herder also estimates that the carrying capacity, also known as K, is 25 frogs. So the question is, if the maximum per capita growth rate is 0.43 frogs per year, right, how many frogs should be in the pond next year? So starting with 17, maximum is 25, 0.43 frogs per year growth. We got to take that into account. We're wondering for next year how many are going to be in there. All right, so there are our formulas. If you want to try this one on your own, pause the video, work through it, see how you do. All right, let's look at this. So we mentioned carrying capacity. So the only formula that really has that is going to be here. So let's try this formula here. D and DT is equal to R max times N multiplied by K minus N over K, the carrying capacity. So what of this information do we have? Do we have R max? We sure do. The maximum per capita growth rate is 0.43 frogs per year. So let's put that in. 0.43 frogs per year times n. How many did we start with? 17. Times k minus n. 25 was our carrying capacity minus 17 all over the carrying capacity of 25. So here's where once again we are going to have to use our handy dandy calculator. So take out your calculator. I'm going to clear all this. And I'm going to say 25 minus 17 is 8. So I'm going to work down here first. 8 over 25. And we know, so that would be 0.43 times 17, whoops, 17 times 8 divided by 25. So let's just do a quick 8 divided by 25. That's 0.32. So really now what we've got is 0.43 times 17 times 0.32. So let's do the math in your calculator. 0.43 times 17 times 0.32 equals 2.33. So basically what we're saying is the change in number over the year, because remember it was frogs per year, so that's our, that's our yearly time frame, is 2.3 frogs. That's the growth rate. But the question asked, how many frogs will be in the pond? Well, if we have a growth rate of 2.3 frogs and there were 17, that tells me we should have 19.3 or between 19 and 20 frogs in my pond next year. Okay? So hopefully this video helped you learn how to do some of these problems where you're calculating growth and population rate change. And yeah, we talked about frogs and fish. One of the bigger questions that you might start to consider now is what does this mean for humans on the earth? Do humans have a carrying capacity? Are we at our carrying capacity? Have we reached it? What can our population sustain? Maybe we need to do some math and figure it out. Hopefully you found this information helpful. If you did, click like and subscribe so Herder will continue making videos for you.